George Delaney. I'm about to begin a painting that will be eight feet by four feet. Uh, when completed, it will be done in oil. The subject is the city skyline of Providence, Rhode Island. I took the photos myself. There are a number of photos that I've composited in Photoshop into one unique image. There was no single shot available of the skyline, per se. So I hope you will bear with us as we undertake to complete this in the next 30 days. It is October 2nd, 2012 at 3.15 in the afternoon. And here we go. Thank you. Well, it started a long time ago. I began to draw in elementary school. Uh, my mother gave me a crayon kit and later bought me a winky dink screen. And I learned that I could draw, I could sketch, I could trace, I could make recognizable images. And it was very exciting. And there was a period of time when I'd do a drawing and hang it up on my bedroom wall in my house. And I got, I guess I got excited enough about it that I'd, I'd invite the neighborhood kids in to draw. <laughs> and we'd, we'd all hang our drawings up on the wall. And I would be the critic. <laughs> then later I went to the Rhode Island School of Design. I was lucky to go there. There was plenty of inspiration there in the form of my fellow students and faculty who were very talented, skilled, and I have worked in the art and design profession ever since. For almost 20 years I ran a design firm in Providence, a small design communication company. We did what was then called collateral design, meaning books, brochures, posters, print media mostly. And that carried with it a certain amount of satisfaction because you could create something from nothing and then watch it become symbolic for a company. Yes, painting is very satisfying. Painting involves the mind, also the gut, the heart, and the eyes. They all come together in painting. Most every painting goes through one ugly stage after another. And if you're really lucky, you can feel it coming along. You can feel it wanting to be born. And if you're really lucky at the end, you can capture it in some form that you can call final. It never is really final. You could keep working. I used to joke that one completed painting was worth a dozen trips to the shrink. And now I just am thankful for the ability to remember my childhood painting and to undertake these exercises, these creative exercises, and to see where they take me. You know, we have the idea that we're doing the painting, that I'm doing this painting, and of course I am, but in reality, the painting takes me where it wants me to go. I don't have that much to do with it. I plug in the colors and I figure out the technical problems and the perspective maybe, if that's what's required. The actual painting itself just comes alive under my brush. It's a marvelous and miraculous experience. And, um, when I was 25, I really didn't appreciate it at all. And now, at retirement age, I think it's the most mysterious and wonderful thing <laughs> going. So you might ask, how did this painting begin? A friend recommended me to a design firm. The design firm called me up and asked me if I'd be interested. I said, sure, I'd be interested. So they defined the problem for me. I went into Providence, Rhode Island, and took some photos to illustrate the idea. I presented some five by seven inch sketches. They were too small to really appreciate. So eventually, after a number of different studies, photographic and, and, and drawings and sketches, 
I did a painting that was uh, four feet by two feet, 50% scale of what the proposed final painting was to be. And that painting was sufficiently large so that the client could appreciate what we were really trying to achieve. And so he gave me the green flag. He said, go do it. So I did any number of trips into Providence to take pictures, look at the light, look at the buildings. I realized when I looked at some of the photos that I didn't actually understand the way the buildings existed in space. I couldn't tell what the building was actually doing in relation to the buildings around it or in relation to the shadows or the sun. And so I'd go back into Providence and actually look up at the building and walk the building, walk around it and until I really got a sense of what the building was all about. So the combination of the trips and the photographs and the drawings helped me out immeasurably. And over a period of about two, two and a half months, I put this painting together of the uh, Providence skyline. It was based on photography I took up at Prospect Park overlooking the city. But the truth is that the trees had grown so tall over 20 years that there was no single view of the city that captured the entire expanse that I wanted to paint. So I took views from between the trees. I stood at several locations, each one with a different perspective, all from Prospect Park. But nonetheless, the perspective changed. But what I liked was that I could capture the whole city skyline. Yeah, so where am I going to go with this? Oh, in the new year, I'd like to do a few more of these. In fact, I'd love to do one eight feet high by 16 feet, twice the scale. As with every painting and every creative work, it's been a, a, a process of discovery. So I always feel a debt to my clients because in essence they say here here's some money and here's an opportunity go make something out of it and uh, wow isn't that a proposition so thank you to all who have been my clients and customers over the years you're the ones who have in many senses offered me opportunities and defined what they are